Rick B's Daily Vlogs. All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining another Facebook Live event, another interview that we're going to have today. It's going to be a fun, fun interview. Not only is this person talented, this person, it's going to be a funny funny interview and I'm going to keep it funny. I'm going to keep it fun and simple. I'm already, we already reached out to him. We already talked about or discussed what we're going to talk about. So hopefully you guys have fun. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you guys follow me on social media, you guys already know who I have and who's coming on with me. So as we always do on the daily podcast, the daily vlog, we are going to get this started. So let's get this started. Welcome everyone, it's the Daily Podcast and the Daily Vlog here on Zoom, Facebook Live. We have a special guest coming on today, talented actor by the name of Eugene Cordero. Been in movies, a couple movies. Loki was the most recent that I saw. He was also on Skunk Island, Skunk Island, Skull Island, the Kong movie, Skull Island. Um, he just wrapped wrapped up a movie that he did and i'll let him talk about that later on because i don't want to spoil it he was also pillboy from the good place uh he played a character named stoke on mandalorian brooklyn 99 um player uh character by the name of pandemic i think that's his name but yeah we're gonna wait for him to jump on and when he jumps on we're gonna go ahead and do what we normally do i'm gonna throw a nice theme music for him i'm trying to think of a nice music that i have for him um he did he was in loki so i don't know if i want to do any loki stuff for him what do you guys think should we do loki should we do loki you guys like loki we should do loki i think we'll do loki it's not the one i like this is the one is this the one i like no, that's not the one I like. Maybe this is the one I like. <coughs> <coughs> Eating a lemon drop. Ah, oh, man, I can't find the one I like. It was one that I really liked. Maybe it was this one. Anyways, we're just going to use this one because coming into the daily podcast with me, Eric B, as we speak right now, we're a minute late. I'm going to bring him on, Mr. Eugene Codero, right there. Hey. Mr. Eugene, what's going on, buddy? How are you, man? Good. How are you? Good. How's everything good, been? Good. Good, good. Good. Yeah. That's living, good. living it up. Living, uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm living it up. I'm, You're living I'm it here. up, man. It's like, oh, yeah. let, let, let's get everyone who, who's just getting on, who's watching us on Facebook Live. Eugene Cordero right here. Famous, I want to say famous comedian, Filipino actor that represents the Filipino community. Let's give him a round of applause here. Oh, wow. We're going sound effects and everything. Yeah, yeah, we, got the whole, we got the whole board here, man. This my, if my Apple iTunes was working, I'd throw more music on there. But for some reason, <laughs> it's not working today. <laughs> That's okay. We don't have, we don't have the uh, clearance for a lot of those yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Especially a lot of this is going to be uploaded on YouTube later on. So... That's why I was sure. like a quick we're twenty gonna, second. Lose a lot of it. Quick twenty second. Eugene, man, thank you for jumping on. Thank you for um, you know, taking the time. Um, I'm not sure where you're where you're calling from, but when you said seven thirty, I was like prime time. That works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you in L.A.? Wait, are you in? You're in San Fran. I'm in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in L.A. Oh, I'm perfect. In LA. So, so we're the right time zone. There's there's no hour gap or here or that. Perfect. No, no, we're living, we're living in the same sunny weather. Well, ish. Not, not for me. Not man, for you. It's sunny down there. For me, it's not sunny down yeah. here. Man, so how's yeah. everything been? Everything good? I mean, you know, sorry for taking you away from the Olympics right now. You know, if you're watching anything um, uh, re live, sorry about that. No, I'm good. I mean, you know, I watch my Olympics, but I'm not, uh, I'm not 
I, I watch the. Uh, I like getting the spoilers and then watching them afterwards. Oh, yeah, well, I think I get a little too stressed out. Yeah, you know, watching them live. You, you know, the bad thing about Japan being a uh, 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 a day ahead is we're going to watch what they just did yesterday today, right? So we already know. Yeah. You know that you know Simone Biles bowed out for some reason. Like we're not going to get that sure. surprise. Um, the Philippines when the Philippine uh, Filipina was it Marjolin Marjolin. A weightlifter when yeah. she won gold. It's like, dude, my Facebook was just like, whoa. It's like, wow. It's crazy, man. It's so amazing. First gold for the nation. Man. Yes. You know, what's funny. If you had to be in the Olympics right now to represent, you know, the Philippines, what sport? Any sport? It could be winter. It could be summer. What sport would you would you pick? What would I pick? Yeah. What do I think I'd actually be good at? Or yeah, yeah, what yeah. would I pick? To- <laughs> what, what would you oh, pick that know. you'd want to do? I mean, weight, weightlifting is pretty, like, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and then I guess, like, any kind of, like, decathlon where they're doing, like, where it's, like, old school Olympics, where it's, yeah. like, they're doing all of the events. They're running. They're doing the, the long jump, the high jump, all of that stuff, and they're showing how athletic they can be across the board. I like that kind of overall the overall winner, you yeah, know? Yeah, man. I, I mean, I thought about this when they first came out and I was like, man, I would pick a sport that I'm not good at just so when I go there and don't win a medal, everyone's going to be like, man, did you suck? Like, I, I didn't know how to play. I didn't know how to play handball. Yeah. You know, it's like, listen, there's no way I would, I would kill at ping pong. <laughs> oh my no God. way. Handball, water polo, forget it. I'd get cramps in my no. hips. Yeah. You know, I'd be have, I'd have to be, be able to shot. touch the ground in, in water polo. If I can't touch the ground, yeah, I'm not, yeah. you know, Filipino, man, I'm five, five. Right. I'm the average Filipino height. You know, it's like once yeah. six feet hits, it's like, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 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 dead in the water. Bro. Yeah, man. Thank you for representing the Filipinos in in Hollywood. And and I want to say Hollywood oh. because, you know, the couple of movies that I've seen you in, um, I was like, hey. I know that guy. Then when I saw you in the Mandalorian, I was like, wait, that's the same character. And then, you know, Kong Skull, yeah. Skull Island. And then the most recent Loki, we'll touch on Loki towards the end because that's the most, you know, right. right I love the t-shirt. Course. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Crushing it. I don't even have swag from that show. Dude. Well, you know, we have to pay for it. So I'm pretty sure if you say, sure, hey, sure, sure. you know, can I get a, sh- you know, TVA shirt? I'm pretty sure they'll give you one. This one we have to pay for. Yeah, it. It's like. See. Had to be fitting because you were working for the TVA. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, first question, first question I have that I always get or I always give is, what got you into acting? Um, I mean, it's funny that we're talking about the Olympics. I think I got into acting because I wasn't very, um, I wasn't really uh, good in sports, uh, like team sports. I was just like. I didn't have the bug for it when I was young. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I, I don't know if I had the drive to do it, to like practice as hard as you would have to for it. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I had an older, I have an older sister and she's amazing at sports and really good in school. So she kind of followed the Filipino American kind of trajectory of like going in either into medicine or law or you know, something like that. And I just didn't have that bug. Uh, I was just not, I just, I knew early on that I was just kind of not built for that. And, yeah. you know, there was times where that felt like I was a disappointment to the fam and stuff, but, you know, but, uh, but I, I enjoyed, I just enjoyed uh, doing like uh, being kind of, performing on stage type things. I, I think all, all Filipinos did kind of early on. Like when you're a kid, everybody's singing karaoke, everybody's doing, you know, their version of Jodeci or whatever yeah, RV group was out with their buddies. And there was dance crews and there was, you know, cotillions where everybody was doing all of these dances. And I mean, there was everything. There was, you know, debuts and all of that stuff where you had your opportunity to, you know, to do it. And there were so many Filipinos consistently in like a uh, talent shows, you know, like that you would see that would just be fantastic singers or dancers or whatever. So like Filipinos in the arts was always a thing. And yeah. 
something that I, I connected to whenever I would see cousins and stuff doing shows. And I'm like, oh, I want to I want to try to do that side of my life. Uh, so I tried to get into it. And, you know, it was high school doing theater. Uh, and I and I loved it. And then, uh, you know, I decided to just pursue acting for college, moved to New York, you know, and then just started pursuing the dream that, you know, at the time that I was in college and everything, there was just not enough of us, representation of us yeah. to be around. I mean, there was, you know, there was Dante Bascal, you know, doing Hook and Lou Diamond Phillips, who, you know, we... And, and Tia Carrere, who we were hoping were all Filipino, but, you know. We didn't know, right? Yeah. Um, but you didn't know, you yeah. know. It was just kind of like, um, and, you know, it was during a time where people didn't really connect, not people, but like the, um, I, don't, I don't know, the U.S. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody was just like, they were trying to clump Asians and in like just one big group and we just didn't look like that, man. Yeah. We just, you know, yeah. there was no place to put us. They didn't know if we were Spanish or this, like if anything, they knew that our moms were the nurses that helped them, you know, when they were overseas or here in the States and, you know, to the majority, like they knew some of our food because of that and all yeah. of that stuff, but nobody could really put us in a, in a, um, in a place that could, could kind of give us recognition when I was starting to do acting and stuff. So, you know, I just, in New York, I just kind of had a hard time yeah, kind of breaking in because nobody was, um, nobody was looking for me or us. Yeah. Nobody was looking for us. I, I mean, even right now, nobody's looking for us. We're breaking barriers because we just, they're seeing us and we're doing great work. And then they ask us later what we are. Yeah. Um, because uh, it's not, it, it's not uh, immediately, you know, one Filipino looks totally different from another. Exactly. Filipino, yeah. You know, I had a uh, um, Jane Rambawa on the show a while back um, and I was adamant with her about a show that I, that I want one day to happen where it's just an all Filipino cast from the director to, you know, the caterers to everything like that, where, you know, your producer, your, everything is all Filipino cast. And, you know, we'll touch on what you guys, what your, the project you're doing later on with Joe Coy, we'll bring, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you can talk about that later on. Um, and that, yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. that to me is like when I heard that project going on and, you know, your friends with Joey Gila, I had Joey Gila on a while back as well. Ah. And God, he's the best. Reaching out to him and him telling me, the, you know, the little snippets on what's going on. We might as well bring it up now. You're doing a show called Easter Sunday with uh, Joe Coy, right? Or you're, you're, it's yeah, it's a movie that will come. It'll come out uh, next spring around Easter, um, probably a couple of weeks. They announced it to come out like uh, August. Uh, I'm sorry, April first. Okay. Um, so you know, I'm I'm assuming you know things change all the time, but yeah. I'm assuming it's. It's going to come out around that time, right before Easter and for people to see it. But it's a spring uh, release, at least. What can you so talk about exciting. that show? Is there, is there limits that you can, is there things that you can talk about or things you can't talk about? Um, not, as far as I know, I mean, it's a family comedy. I mean, they, you know, they brought it up in the trades and stuff. So yeah. it's a family comedy about, you know, Joe coming back to going back to Daly City and like, you know, visiting his family for Easter Sunday and then you know, a bunch of hijinks and stuff happen. It's a, it's a family comedy, but it's still Joe Coy yeah. who is, you know, brilliant. And it's based off of him and, and his comedy. And so it has that kind of, um, you know, real story to it. And it's a real Filipino story. And we try ultimately to just live it rather than um, feed the, our culture to yeah. people. Yeah. It's there. You'll you see, see it, it because it's, it's all Filipinos. Nice. So you'll see it because it's all of us there. Nice. You know, well, like, like you don't need to have lumpia behind you for us to know that this That's is two Filipino. Filipinos talking yeah. to each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but will it be there? I mean, if you're eating, yeah. I guess it would be, you know, you know how disappointing um, it'll be to go to a Filipino party without lumpia. Come on. We have to have some, you know I mean? someone has to make lumpia. Come yeah. On. Come on. <laughs> and you know, and it depends and you and you know where you are in your life depending on how legit your white rice cooker is. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're a grown man and you you know, your rice cooker is still only feeding, you know, is only a three cupper, then you're like, Man, you gotta 
you gotta get a bigger one, bro. My parents bought this one, and when I went over there to eat, and I'm like, w- "There's so many different buttons here. What, what do I? Yeah, what is this?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We got one now that like stays warm for the day, and I'm like, "Oh, I made it." <laughs> You nice. know what I'm saying? Like that's how I know that I'm doing okay. Is nice. that I have a rice cooker that nice, nice. I know, think I think ours that stays warm. It's enough for the family that lives in the house. But you know, it's like when we have guests over, it's like, oh man, I think I think we got to make uh, three more pots. <laughs> we got to double up. Yeah, we got to triple up. We got to sure. like take take a list on who's coming over. Yeah, he eats a lot of rice. <laughs> okay, he eats yeah. a lot of rice. Oh man, we just got to buy a new rice cooker. Forget it. We got to. We got to. We gotta get the. We gotta go to Costco right yeah, away. Exactly. When you were filming, um, when you were filming Easter Sunday, did a lot of the things that you guys did? Did that bring back memories? You know, with your Filipino family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it did a lot of it. I mean, you know, it it, it touched home a lot. Just like walking into this on the set and yeah. seeing how detailed it was, and just being like, "Oh shit, this is." You know, I'm. All, it's okay that I'm swearing in here. Oh yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, time, but you know, time. like just walking on set and just going like, "Oh, there's that that we had in my home. These are the chairs that are very similar to the chairs that I had, or they're at least the ones from my tita's house." You yeah. know, like it was it across the board. The food, the the um, the way that uh, the furnishings were, to the way that things were decorated, to what we were wearing was very. Um, you know, reminiscent of my childhood and growing up. And, you know, there was aspects of that that made it kind of hard filming it right now just because, um, you know, last uh, November my, my father passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear so that. So just kind of having that kind of representation was, like, therapeutic in a way. Yeah. Um, and a way to feel, like, comforted by all of these other um actors uh who you know pulled things from their from their life to put in their characters and it made it so specific which was awesome um and you know and and there as sad as it was at moments i i was just so overcome by the joy of seeing all of these filipino actors and all these filipino people like doing what they want to do. And we were so excited to do it that, it, you know, we didn't have time to be sad about it. Like I got time to, um, to go through it and allow myself to, you know, to feel the feelings. But, um, but it, it, you know, overall it probably made it more therapeutic in the most helpful way than anything. Nice. So, and I loved how I you guys picked daily yeah. city. I love daily city being that, you know, it's the staple. I grew up in the Bay Area, and it's like, you know, during my summer, I would spend time in Daly City because that's where my cousins lived, and that's where all the Filipinos were. Um, yeah. yeah. And lately, it's not as Filipino anymore as it was growing up. You know, Filipinos all migrated sure. over to Sacramento from from what I heard last. So, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like putting – but at least placing it in a place uh, or, or placing the movie in a – location that is uh, heartfelt for all philams to yes. you know recognize is is, is great yeah. you know you could have you could do it in daily city you can do it in jersey city jersey you can do city. it you know yeah. in toronto like you know it's up to you yeah, but yeah, yeah vegas uh but like as long as it's you know it's not like we're shooting it or basing it in like oklahoma city where we're like oklahoma and they, there's not that many of us there i mean there might be enough you know, and shout out to the Filipinos in Oklahoma, you know, for holding it down. But you know what? Leave me a comment like a, if there is a Filipino in Oklahoma City. I, I, I'd like to yeah, see yeah. if there's a Filipino in Oklahoma City. It has yeah. to be more than one. Don't know, be that one sending me a comment. Because I, grew, you know, I grew up in in uh, in Michigan, and you know, there was there was a lot of Canadian Filipinos that yeah. would come down and hang out, and you know, we had our barcada and stuff that were around and family. So we had our tight knit community, but it wasn't like there was like a Jollibee or a you know oh, seafood man. city that was that that was right there. Like we had to drive, we had to get our Filipino food from various places and go f- further away, yeah. you know, to get it. So it wasn't like it had that kind of base. And moving to New York and seeing more of a Filipino community, or going out to Jersey and seeing that, or going up to San Fran or Daly City. We're just moving to LA and just seeing 
how many Filipinos are around. I, I feel like I missed out on that growing yeah, up, yeah. but I'm so happy as an adult and also as a dad that my kids are able to be surrounded by so many, yes. you know? Uh, yeah, so I, I work cool. in the medical field, so whenever you know I'm, you know, the typical Filipino who went into med- medicine, um, whenever yeah. I see a Filipino, older Filipino guy, what's the first thing they always ask us, right? You Filipino? You Filipino? Yeah. <laughs> what part of the Philippines always. are you from? <laughs> I know. Well, that's so crazy. Is I have uh, people usually the older generation rarely asks me. I'd have to tell them first because they don't feel like I. Um, look enough and I would get that more than anything they're like oh you are well where's your mom and dad from yeah and then I would tell them and they're like oh both of your parents are Filipino I'm like yeah yeah I'm fully Filipino uh and they're like oh yeah you you know because you look mixed I'm like I understand what you think (laughs) uh and I appreciate that you're that honest with me but yeah Cordero Cordero what what part of Cordero Filipino family are you from I know yeah. a couple of Coderos. And, and then I tell them, like, oh, my dad's from Ilo Ilo. And they're like, oh, I think I know your dad. I was like, you don't know my dad. But <laughs> they always do that. They always try to tell us that they think they know us from somewhere. It's like, yeah. It's like, sure. Ah, you know what? Every now and then I like to mess with them. It's like, yeah, you know what? We are family. I think I your dad owes my dad money. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the you know, family. Yeah. I do that just in general in life. There's, I get a lot of um, people in life right now kind of going like, hey, you look familiar to me, you know, and it's usually from some show or whatever, but, and I can tell that it is, but then they'll say something like, did we go to high school together? Or like, where'd you go to college? I'm like, well, hang on, where'd you go to college? Yeah. And whatever they say, I say, that's where I went, Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then just like, just to end the conversation there, because I'm like, you know, when people ask me, like, oh, you're an actor. Where do I know you from? I'm like, oh, man, I'm not. It's not my job yeah. to go through my resume so then you can realize what you know me from and then tell me yeah. that you thought, like, oh, yeah, I like that show. I'm like, it's not. I'm not. It's not my like, job no. to do that. Like, yeah. you know. I, I mean, as soon as um, I saw you on Loki, the two things I was like, dude, that's the guy from Skull Island and that's Pillboy. And it's like yeah. right away, it's like. I figured you out. I'm like, oh my God, you know, this guy right here. And I reached out yeah. to you right away and I'm like, dude, you know, I got to get you on the show. You know, I'm, I want the Filipinos to represent, you know, this show that I do. I mean, everybody's welcome on my show, but it's nice to have, you know, the Filipino representation because, you know, like you said earlier, there's, we've been put on this series where they'll make us play a Japanese character. They'll make us play a Spanish yeah. character, which is no issue. If you're an actor and you're trying to get a gig, they tell you to play Japanese, you're playing Japanese, right? Because that's what you're, that's what actors try to do. Yeah. But it's nice and to that's, see. And that's, and that's what you try to do, especially when um, everybody was kind of looking out for themselves and there wasn't a movement of, you know, and, and you know, everybody's so hungry at the time. Now it is a little bit more of like, you know, if I get a script where the last name is obviously Japanese or, or Chinese or, or Hispanic, and they're and I'm like, is this a Mexican role? I'm like, you can find a great Mexican actor. Yeah, you just have to do more work. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't. I I would love the opportunity, of course. And if um, if everybody else that I was auditioning against uh, were were of that ethnicity and it was okay that I was doing it, then great. I mean, you know, um, cause I'm not, I'm not going to fault another Asian actor if they get a Filipino role, if I went out for it and just didn't get it, yeah. you know? I mean, it's a business uh, at the end of the um, day. It just right? means that you're good. Yeah. It's a business. Um, I mean. but you know, but hopefully, hopefully ultimately if it's a Filipino role, it's only Filipino actors going out because there's enough. Yeah, that are fantastic that I can, you know, um, you know, that I can count both of my hands plus three other hands. Yeah. Immediately that are in the category of, you know, um, of great and would do awesome on your show. So that's, you know, that's uh, that's that's the thing that I think is as hard uh, for casting people 
is that, um, you know, you also have to have the reps of the chops for them to trust that you'll show up, you know, and you'll do the work and you'll do good work. And yeah. that is tough, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, we were put in this time where you can just kind of audition for anything and you're just trying to make ends meet and you're never auditioning for a Filipino yeah. part. It never, it rarely says, you know, the name of the character, the age ish, the yeah. you know, age range of the character and Filipino or Filipino American next to it. Rarely. Now hope, thank goodness. It just says the age range and the name of the character, not even a last name, just a first name and the age range of the character. And then they're just leaving it up to whoever gets it. Yeah. You know, to play the role. And then they fill in the blanks, which is, you know, how you write anything anyway, especially when it comes to television, you know, um, I'm glad that they didn't put a last name on Casey. No, no. Because then, you know, that would have um, limited what they wanted. Now, they might have been auditioning only Asian performers. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, it was kind of... It, it, when, when you audition for, like, any kind of Disney, it being um, Marvel or Star Wars or anything, uh, it's usually... And this is how it was for Mandalorian and Loki. It was kind of like evergreen uh, sides, pages. Um, they weren't the pages from, they weren't the script from the actual show. Oh, wow. It was just kind of like the idea of it. So then you were kind of playing the idea of what Casey is or the idea of what Stoke was in Mandalorian of a guy who needs his village to get like this vigilante to come help. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the exact scene. It was just kind of like, can you play this world? And then the same with, with Loki. It was like, can you play this world? And then once it, you know, got further into the audition process or um, closer to booking it, then they were like, oh, it's actually for this. Nice. Um, and then you go like, oh, that's cool. Um, you know. So they didn't give you guys and an then, idea like this is going to be for Mandalorian or this is going to be for you know loki no you know you kind of had an idea because you'd hear the buzz of what it was for but you know even that has changed in the past you know where it's like oh i thought it was for this no 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 that's a different show you know okay um and uh you know so especially for loki i didn't find out until i was already cast in it that you know or close to getting cast to it that you know it was for loki and then Casey, you know, I, Casey needs his own show, so. man. I, I mean, that, that character, uh-huh. like, he needs his own show. We need to find out why he's never seen a fish or gutted a fish. We need to find sure. out, find out why, you know, I mean, that character yeah. you did, man, it's like you, you play that character well, where you acted. I believe that's, you know, when you said I have never, what's a fish? I'm like, yeah, you know, we're thinking like, why is this guy never seen a fish? You know, what's going on here? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's a weird thing where it's just like, I mean, technically, and I know this is so strange to say out loud, but I mean, the only people that would know what an actual fish was and that it's called a fish is if you are from Earth. Yeah. 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 Right. And you weren't technically from earth or we don't technically know what, you know, I, I, and I, so that was kind of easy to be like, well, I mean, there's a chance that it was, if he explained what the being was in that moment, which he wasn't going to, but if he did explain, then I'd be like, Oh, that's a, this, yeah, you know, or whatever other word I would have called it. Um, but, uh, but who knows? Yeah, and yeah. also, you know, after watching, hopefully we're not spoiling this show for people. They should, who listen to this or Here's watch this Already podcast, been finished watching the show. Already so, yeah. been finished watching yeah. it or pause it, this podcast right now. But, you know, there's so many different variants and so many different, you know, that you never know how long I have been in that, you know, timeline. Yeah. To know what it is anyway. So, like, I mean, that's really nerdy stuff when it comes to the marvel like oh man universe and stuff but um you know who knows and I, who knows what's going to happen season two wise i mean you know if you saw the kind of 
even if you just you didn't see the scene, but you saw the credits at the end of the final episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, you know, or IMDb or whatever. I'm listed as Hunter, you know, K five E. Yeah, you know, so I'm in the timeline that Loki comes back to. I'm somebody else. Oh wow! Or or I I have chosen a di- you know I, I have a different path in that timeline. So, wow. You know, who knows if the, the character is the same, who knows if that character is going back, but nice. Um, but, uh, but this you is... know, it kind of leaves it up in the air. And I like that, you know, that moment kind of gives my character an Easter egg to possibly, you know, return or whatever. Yes. We need more. It'd be nice to see a different, you know, different type Casey, you know, or Hunter K S K K five E or whatever they're going to call you. It's going to be nice to see you back on there playing a different role. And it's like yeah. totally different character. That's, that's going to be fun to see. I can't, I can't wait for season two to come. Yeah. Out. I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, as of right now, there's like, you know, there, there's not any conversation that we're having about the coming back for season two, but you know, that, that can change as quick as make it happen. Marvel. Make yeah. it happen. We want to see him back on there. Um, yeah. This is your second, second time around working with Tom Hiddleston. You, you worked with him with a uh, Kong skull Island. Um, how's your yeah. rapport with, yeah. that, with, with Tom Hiddleston? Oh, it's great. I mean, the, he's just a pro, you know, yeah. and he, uh, you know, he was the lead of, um, of Kong and we spent six months together shooting that movie. And, My. you know, there's a lot of heavy hitters in that movie. Yes. So, he did, he did a great job of just kind of like, you know, um, doing what he does, which is he does all his homework and he comes, you know, to every project completely prepared and above prepared, you know. Um, and uh, which also gives him so much room to like just kind of have fun on the day. And, and he was. He was great. And we, we spent a lot of downtime joking around together um, doing Kong. Nice. Because if you watch Kong, it, you know, it's a lot of walking. It's a lot of like a bunch of people walking around and seeing a bunch of different creatures and then fighting, you know, creatures yeah. and Kong and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of like um, set pieces that we had to walk through. And so that's like a lot of us spending that time together. And uh, and he was great. You know, he was just he was he was very cool. Um, and we, we kept in touch ever since that movie. Um, just kind of checking in with each other and hoping nice. that we'd work on another project. And, you know, um, when Loki happened, he had no idea that I was going to do it. Um, and then he found out and, you know, he texted me right away as soon as he found out. I nice. was very excited. and We were excited to see each other again and play. And we had so much more to play with in this uh, show than we got to do in Kong. Yeah. Um, and it was great. And, you know, and the way they shoot Loki, the way they shot Loki was not like episode per episode, but kind of like a movie. So, you know, um, you know, there was a bunch of scenes that we shot that, you know, who knows if they got cut, who knows if they're getting saved for something else, Marvel related, who knows, but you know, it's, uh, it's in there and, and all of the stuff we did was great. So. And this was I'm all excited. being shot during COVID, right? When 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 Loki was being it shot. was yeah yeah we shot we started I I went to Atlanta last March, and before I did my costume fitting, I did all of that stuff, and then before I actually got to set to shoot, um, I did a rehearsal, but a, a, to actually shoot, they flew me back to LA, saying, "Hey, you're gonna go back to LA for like two weeks, and then we'll you know, and once everything calms down, then you'll come back." You know, and that two weeks turned into, you know, eight months. Yeah. And, uh, you know, went back in September during COVID and uh, and shot it in Atlanta then. Nice. Um, you know, and, you know, September was still pretty hot, Betty, and, and scary. So, yeah. you know, I had to be away from my family and just kind of hunker down and quarantine for a long time out there. Um so it was a little stressful in a different way. I couldn't completely lock in like I would usually do, yeah. but you know, it was still great. And I was excited to work again. And I was excited that we were able to, you know, get it done and, you know, and 
them take care of everybody so well that we were able to finish production and they were able to release it close to when they were planning on it yeah. initially. Yeah, nice. So, I mean, that's cool. Well, you know, um, and yeah. And then the same with, you know, Tacoma starting and us shooting that show while, uh, quarantine. I mean, while COVID's going on and Easter Sunday is still, we were in Canada during, you know, the filming, yeah. they were still in lockdown and we were still doing that stuff. So, you know, it's, it was a very intense time to be shooting anything. But it was good um, to get something out, right? Said, I mean, especially after all last year when we weren't, when everyone was not doing anything, it's oh yeah, a good feeling to get out, share your, you know, share your, your presence to everyone, share your talents to us who are will be watching later on, and you know, a lot of people don't give you know thanks to the actors, and you know, I'm you know again, I'm a healthcare worker, I've been through the beginning, you know, I'm still going through it now, but I want to give props to the actors who had to stop for a little bit. And then once slowly things started coming to a point where, okay, we'll get tested, we'll get vaccinated. Now you guys are back on your feet. Props to you guys for holding it down, not doing anything for a while, trying to figure out what's next. And then, you know, you're now, like you said, you're going to be away from your family for a while shooting films. Uh, you know, yeah. props to you guys, man. That's that's a lot of work. And, you know, you guys want to do it. That's a good thing. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know it's everybody working right now. Yeah. It's everybody's putting their lives at risk and, and, and doing all that. So it's like, I don't think it's any different for us other than, you know, you know, people taking any job seriously, but it, it's nice to, to know that people take what we do pretty serious rather than it's just kind of this, you know, fun thing yeah. that everybody says they can do. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh no, I t I look at it differently. I mean, ever since I started doing this podcast and I started getting actors on here, actresses on here, I started looking at the backstory of like, okay, this is what they had to do to get here, and this is what they have yeah. to keep doing to stay there, and it's a lot of work, you know. For someone like me who works eight hours a day, forty hours a week, I always want to give up at a certain time. You guys just keep going, and I love the fact, like, you know, I looked at your resume when it comes to your actings and all the TV series, the movies you've been in. Man, you are doing a lot, and, you know, big props to you for getting out there, getting the roles done, putting it out, jumping on one, going on to the next, and still holding down, you know, being a father or being a husband. That's that's some good stuff, man. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, – I was – I, I luckily was able to go with the flow of, you know, how the world was changing as far as the entertainment industry was uh, and use it towards my advantage. Uh, you know, I, I've said recently, and I, and I keep saying it because I'm not embarrassed of it. It's just yeah. what life is. But, you know, when I, when I moved, when I lived in New York and was trying to do whatever I could and, you know, auditioning for SNL and all that kind of stuff, because that was like, the dream when you live in New York and you do comedy stuff um, and you do sketch and you do improv and, you know, you play characters, you're like, man, I could do that kind of show. I can do a sketch show. And then when you realize that, I mean, I ultimately realized that that was not my calling or my dream even like I wanted to be, you know, I, I consider myself a comedic actor, but yeah. I consider myself an actor before anything, you know, like rather than people call me a comedian, a comedian is, Joe Coy and, and Joey are yeah. comedians. They they do stand up and they're brilliant at it and they work on that craft of being comedians. Um, I do comedy within the acting that I do, but you know it's ultimately another role that I feel like I could succeed at. And yeah. um, you know when I when I moved when I was auditioning for things in New York and auditioning for stuff in L.A. early on, you know. I wasn't getting very uh, opportunities to audition for very big roles. And my ego at the time was being like, why am I not getting bigger things or being able to go for bigger things? But, you know, my work ethic kept my head down and kept going for it. And then I realized quickly that like the roles I was able to audition for were smaller roles, but, and maybe, you know, Hollywood and the entertainment industry didn't, know where to place us yet yeah so uh so they weren't going to trust filipinos especially but like asians to play bigger roles yet you know it was still left to 
you know, white and black actors first and then kind of filling in the blanks later. And I think early in my career, that was better because I got to play those smaller parts in this, that, and the other thing and kind of fill in the gaps. And then I get my reps in yeah. and I would get my work done from doing these smaller things. And then the smaller things would add up to bigger things. And it was casting people trusting me to play bigger parts and, you know, people being in my corner for other roles and seeing me do this, that, and the other thing. So as the, as the world as like the show business world was looking to expand their horizons on different minorities and different people of color, I was also expanding my resume to be ready to be at the forefront of each of these shifts. Yes, you were. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, so, I look at your uh, resume. Yeah. I mean, man, you've done, I mean, you've, you've worked with Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Jackson, Brie Larson, you know, um, yeah. Clint, Clint, Clint Eastwood, you know, it's like character. These are, these are characters where you ask anybody, these characters, they know who these people are. And for you to actually say, yeah. I've worked with these people, that's a lot, you know, that's, you know, not a lot. There's people who's been in the acting business for a long time, but still hasn't gotten to work with like big name actors. And for you to be here, uh, you know, where you are right now, your Disney plus family, MCU family, you know, man, props and to be Filipino. I mean, you, you know, we were all, we're going gaga over, you know, uh, Marjolin for winning the gold medal for weightlifting, yeah. but you know, you do you're doing this every day you're you know putting us out every day and you you know you, you when we first talked you said man i want to talk anything i'll be more than happy to talk anything filipino and and that's the cool thing and and that's that's what i love about you know actors who wants to represent who they are and yeah and you know that's why when i heard joe coy's putting out that movie i'm like man i can't wait for this to come out because i want to see what this is about and you know and I'm just happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that there's a movie out there that we can say we can relate to like, Hey, that's, that's exactly what we did every Sunday. Know. You know, that's exactly what, it's what, very cool. Uh, yeah. It's very awesome. And, uh, and I'm so excited and you know, it's funny. Um, when people talk about that movie and talk about like, you know, um, Jay Chandra Sekhar is the director, you know, who's one of the guys from broken lizard Super Troopers, all that stuff. Yeah. He's a, you know, he's a Indian American, um, Asian American, you know, uh, performer and director, uh, but he's not Filipino. And, 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 you know, there is this kind of feel. I know that like people are like, well, it should be a Filipino director. And it's like, there, there's no shoulds. It will be. Yeah. This like, this does this is just starting things. We don't have to get angry about what this is right now. We just have to be excited about the process. Yes. And the, excited that this is moving us forward. And if anything, that hopefully there's a hungry Filipino American director out there that goes, I should have directed that movie. And you're going, Great. Stay hungry and then direct the next one. Yes. Because there should and there will be many more. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, many more opportunities and many more, you know, times where you know, that I, um, you know, there's this kind of mentality, especially in act with actors that like, oh, that was my role. This was that. I, that should have been me. That it's like, but it wasn't, bro. Yeah. It wasn't you. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was somebody else. It was someone else. Maybe it was not even a Filipino. Maybe it was somebody else completely different. But that's just, that was just not our role. Like there's so many moving parts to things. Yeah. And so many aspects of it that still make it a business. We need to respect the fact that it's still a business and there's bad people that run certain parts of business, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And we can't control that. You can control your work. So do your work. And I think there's like, you know, being a Filipino American, you know how to work hard and you know how you work, you can work hard, but also being a Filipino American, you know how to give into the ego that surrounds you by your family Yes, and by your by your um your your community that loves you and they'll pat you on the back even if you shouldn't be pat on the back yet you know they'll pat you on the back and go like oh yeah you got this that should have been you it's like no 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 don't give them the wrong message yeah you can support somebody by just being real and it's like you know i um because they couldn't be more filipino than like when i when i started booking more and more stuff and it was like 
I, I would say around like the Pillboy time or like you know, Tacoma coming out and, um, and Kong coming out. It was all kind of like in the same kind of time, like two, 2017, 18. Yeah. Where I'd be walking around in LA and too many times, I, I mean, I can, I, 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 at least a handful or more times, a, a Filipino mom would walk up to me and say, Hey, my, uh, my son or my daughter is a, uh, is an actor. I'm like, cool. Where are they? Oh, they're right there. Come over here. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> if they were an actor or whatever, they come up to me. Yeah. How old are they? Are they in their twenties? They, you don't walk. You stop babying this yeah. kid. You walk up, have them walk. They, they have to take the initiative. initiative. Yeah. They need to walk up to me and talk to me themselves. And let you stand in the back. Don't, don't, they should not, you know, yeah. you shouldn't be doing the legwork for your grown ass kid. <laughs> and I think that that's like a Filipino thing that is nurturing by the moms. And yeah. I love Filipino moms for that. But there has to be a point where you go, I'm going to take advantage of my career. I'm going to take it yep. on. I'm going to be my own person and give you props. Trust me. I will give you mom, dad props forever. Yes. In everything I do, but you have to give me the opportunity to, you know, because that's embarrassing. You can see it. It's yeah. embarrassing for those, you know, those yeah. kids who are standing over there because they either are too embarrassed to do it themselves and their moms have strong wheels <laughs> and have worked their ass off to get to the U.S. and do it. Do so it, they yeah. know how to fucking put their head down yeah. and come up to anybody and fight anybody in every way. Get that. But like you got to you got to do that if you want to be in this business or in any to. business, you have to be able to stand up for yourself. You know, none of that. Psst, um, psst, oi, oi. Come here, this is Eugene. Yeah, yeah. Come in, talk to yeah. Eugene. Delete, delete. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, none of that. Anytime that kind of stuff happens, I laugh about it. But then I really don't talk to the person about it seriously because yeah. they didn't they didn't take the initiative. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's like. Um, it's not my job to to help you grow up. Yeah, you know, it's 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 my job to just help my kids grow up. Yeah, it's my job to keep working on my career and my family. Um, I can give you advice if you are ready to hear it yourself, but you know, I'm not going to tell your mom about it. Bro. Do you ever do, <laughs> you, know you, do you ever get like um, an audition right there? Like you know, the same scenario. The mom walks up and is like, "Oh, this is my son. You know, this he can act." Go act for him, Dilly. Act for him. Do a role. Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a really good singer. Sing for him. And it's like, what do you think I'm doing? What do you think I'm doing that I'd be able to cast you as a singer? I'm an actor. Uh, you know, I have to work for yeah. the roles too. You know, yeah. I can't say if hey, I have. But listen, if I'm ready to raise up anybody else who's around, and I and I will, and yeah. I, and I will give props to it. And, you know, like when, um, for Tacoma FD, when we were looking for somebody to play my mom and my sister, I, I watched those audition tapes too, because I wanted to help make sure that the people that they were casting were the right people yeah. and, uh, and represented. And, you know, like, um, the person who was playing, you know, I played Hawaiian, in uh, Tacoma FD. And, you know, what does that mean? That could mean that I'm Filipino, um, a, a Filipino descent and Hawaiian descent and still whatever. Um, but I, that could also mean that I'm mixed and I'm, I was, I was willing to just kind of play into the world of it. And I, I wasn't excited about it that, you know, um, uh, the actress who plays my, my mother on that show is amazing. And the person who's playing my sister Uh, Anthea is a great actress yeah. and I saw her, you know, in a all Filipino East West players production of uh, Mamma Mia and nice. thought she was so funny. And when she auditioned for the show, I knew that she totally could play my sister and real talk. When I saw Mamma Mia, me and my wife were like, dude, that reminds me of my sister, Jenny. Nice. And, uh, and, you know, and I had that still in my head when, you know, Tacoma started up. So I'm, you know, I'm all about, you know, it, it's, it's, even though it's show business and everything, it's still a community. Yeah. And you want to work with people that make you happy. 
because you're going to be working with them all the time. Yeah. So course. like when I work with Hiddleston again, we're, we were more than excited because we had a great rapport together and we're excited to work with each other. And, you know, anytime I, I jump and do things again with people, I'm like so excited. And, yeah. you know, like Manny Jacinto and I, we still chat and have lunch and, you know, and, you know, he hangs out with me and my kids all the time because it's like, you know, you create a environment that is great. And same with Joe, yeah. Joe Coy and, and Rodney too. And Rodney Toe and, 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 uh, and, um, and, uh, yeah. And, and Melody, like everybody and, and Joey, like we keep tabs yeah. on each other because it's like you build a community yeah. and, uh, you know, and you get to like pick, you know, I got to spend 10 weeks picking, you know, Tia Carrera's brain and asking her what it was like when she was representing us yeah. at a time where there was nothing. Yeah. There's more now. And I got to kind of, you know, build my career as my, as they were starting to open up to us, but she was building her career when we weren't even yeah. a spec yet, man. Yeah. And she and Lou Diamond Phillips were fucking machines yep. to like, be able to hear the no's and hear the things they were saying about us and still come through and be icons in our community. Come on. Big icons. That's like next, that's next level shit right there. That it's like nothing I can do right now can live up to the, to the people that were doing it, you know, back in the day, yeah. you know, doing it when, when people didn't even know or care what we were doing. And, you know, Rob Schneider's out there, making sure that there's Babinka and oh movies God. that he's talking about and stuff like that. Like that's, that's, that's your dream. Yeah. Where, you know, Dante can like be in a hook and fucking crush it. And we never ask him, they never bring up any Filipino stuff in there, but you can just feel you know that it. love. You know Ernie, it. Ernie Reyes Jr. And all that stuff. It's just like, you know, there's, they've been, there's, there's been trailblazers for us and, um, and, uh, and, you know, and it's everybody ultimately just telling you that it's like, ah, I just focused on doing the work and I let the bullshit go, you know? Nice. Come on. Wh where else can you get, uh, a Filipino playing Richie Valens and we're feeling Richie Valens, but we know in our heart, this is a Filipino guy <laughs> doing this like crazy. Right. I know. Right. And you know, right? you you're telling my mom, my mom's like, my mom's like, you know, he's Filipino, right? He's half Filipino. Lou Diamond Phillips. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, I mean, how, like every season of American Idol or <laughs> The Voice or whatever, <laughs> everybody's just going like, there's a Filipino, there's a Filipino, yep. there's a Filipino. You know, all of them. And they're always making it to top eight or yeah. top whatever. And it's just like, yeah, of course they yeah. are. And we had we have one of the guys here from the Bay Area, Sway Pineda, is one of uh, American Idols. Was, uh, everybody knew him from a group called Drop and Harm here in the Bay Area. He's like they were awesome singers, and when they saw Sway, we're like, he's gonna win it. He's a Filipino. He's gonna win it. You know, man, man. Before we end, there's a couple of things I want to ask you about. You do have a podcast. Yeah. You want to plug? Go ahead and plug the podcast. I, I was listening to the pod, uh, a few of your podcasts a while back, and man, you you're into fitness and into health. And yeah, plug your podcast. Go ahead and show, um, share it with everybody. Oh, I mean, it's it's called the Dumbbells. It's me and my buddy Ryan Stanger, and we're just a he's a he's a personal trainer and an actor and a comedian um, from the Upper Citizens Brigade, also, and uh, and we're good buddies. And um, you know, it's just like in the comedy community, there was just a lot of people who, you know, just started asking about you know how to you know for a while doing comedy or, or doing acting, unless you were like built like an action star, you didn't feel <laughs> like rock. you needed to be. Yeah. You didn't feel like you needed to be, um, uh, like go to the gym or, or that. But then it was ultimately like, well, if you want to be an actor, you still have to be healthy. Yeah. If you want to be a human being, you still have to be healthy. You don't need to be ripped and have like a six pack and all that stuff. You just need to like, eat the right stuff and uh, work out when you can and, and keep your body moving. So it doesn't deteriorate. So it's like a really just goofy podcast where we just stay positive about the real, you know, truths of like health and fitness and how hard it is, you know, yeah. it's all, it's hard to have 
you know, a couple of kids who are not going to finish their meals and, you know, you don't want food to go bad. So you eat their food and like, what does that mean then? You know, and like, how do you balance that out so you can still feel healthy and do all that stuff? And how do you find time to work out? And what happens if you've not worked out in six months when you yeah. said you do it every day? It's like, you know what happens? You start again and you don't stress out about it. You just, you know, and it, it's ultimately like mental health of just like get your head in, into the fact that like, you know, health and fitness is like a lifetime goal. And, um, you know, you don't need to lose 10 pounds in a week. You need to just be healthy for the rest of your life. You know, that's a, and that, that's a good thing because, you know, actors, it, you guys have a hard time trying to find a time to work out. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, in between takes, yeah. you guys are being fed whatever is there. You guys are eating, you know, sure, yeah. so it's hard yeah. to maintain the I'm going to stick on this nice diet and still find time to work out. Yeah. And I mean, I grew up obviously in a Filipino household that had plenty of food and I was definitely the baby of like the barcada that, yeah. you know, was patted on the back for finishing his plate all the time and, you know, and being kind of goofy and roly poly ish, you know? So I, I was, um, you know, I, I, I had quite a few pounds on me growing up and was relatively short and round and, you know, like that kind of mentality, people would squeeze your cheeks and love you for it, but then they would be the first ones to be like, oh, you're getting fat, you know? So it's like such a weird <laughs> mind fuck in the Filipino community of like, do you want me to be fat or do you want me to be musty? Like, what do you want me to be? And you depended too much on what they wanted you to be, yeah. you know? Um, so it's just kind of like as an adult, just kind of finding that fitness and like, getting over any kind of mental hurdles of childhood and stuff that was meant all with love. Yeah, of course. But, you know, could have, but could have fucked you up, you know? So, you, you know, that's you know, the reason why that. I never bring friends over to my Filipino parties. Never, never. You have to be a Filipino friend. If you're coming to my Filipino party, because you know what Filipino families are like. If I brought a white yeah. friend, if I brought a black friend and then they say, your friend's fat, he's eating too much. I mean, my friends will be like, dude, you're, you're mad. Your, your uncle just called me fat. Like, no, dude, that means he likes you. That means he wants you to eat some more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's kind of hard. But yeah, I totally understand about that. The, the whole mental game oh, yeah. they told I mean, us. You know, when, when my wife, uh, my wife is white. And when she came to our house the first time, when we met, she's not anymore. But when we met and she met my family, she was a vegetarian. And my mom was like, oh, yeah, well, there's just chicken in there. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Just because the pun said it's still using chicken broth, there's still chicken in it. Yeah, but you can pick the chicken off. It's like, no, no, no. Or you can still eat the chicken. It's not meat. It's like, what? Meat? Chicken is meat. No, it's chicken. It's like, what are you talking about? And, you know, it's, oh, okay, well, how about this? This is just shrimp. And it's like, shrimp is still, <laughs> She's, she only eats vegetables and stuff. Oh, well, we don't have she can eat a little bit of this, just eat the noodles. And it's just like, man. <laughs> um, okay. And you know, obviously, you know, things have changed and, yeah. um, and it's fine, but you know, it's, it's just so funny that that's like the mindset. And you know, she, she was welcomed with all arms into the, into our family and nice. to our barcada and everything that, nice. you know, it's not even an issue, but you know, it's, it's crazy. It's hard. It's Filipinos crazy. and vegetarians, sometimes, you know, the word does not yeah, mix. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. vegetarian. Here's a uh, kare kare with, uh, yeah, yeah. with the vegetables and uh, the oxtail. I mean, our, our, our generation now and, and like the generation a little bit before us, yeah, there it is. And there's a lot of great Filipino vegan and, veg, you know, yes. vegetarian food now, which is awesome. But, yes. you know. Um, to each their own, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Man, I, again, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, Eugene Cordero, very Filipino last name. I love the fact that your last name is Cordero <laughs> and it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's Filipino enough to where I can pronounce it, but you know, still Filipino enough to where I, I have to say, is it Cordero or Cordero, you know? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Accent. Um, a couple shows that you did back in 2013. That man, I, I, or it was on, it was uh, on YouTube called Funny or Die, where you played Manti Teo back then. 
I just want to oh, let yeah, everybody yeah, know yeah. that. Look that up on YouTube, guys. It's funny. It's funny as hell. And if you guys, I was a big Manti Teo fan. And when that whole shit did happen, I was like, what the hell happened to this guy, man? Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, look yeah. it up on YouTube. Um, and then another one that's coming out that I'm really interested in to watch is called Scroll Wheel of Time that you are yeah. you're doing right now, right? Um, no, we shot that before the pandemic even, okay. and um, and uh, it was a series that I think was for um, a uh, network that since then um, went under during the pandemic. So it's one of those things where I think we'll, we might not see, or it has to be wait wait until it's bought by another streamer or by another network before it would come out but it's been done production wise for a while now it needs to come out i was reading your imdb and it says it says what does it say here it says an up-and-coming rap duo from atlanta who's given an old school ipod is actually a time traveling device yeah yeah and uh I, i play one of the people that they meet through that me and uh uh my buddy Yasser, who's also on that show Black Monday, um, Yasser Lester, who's so funny. We play a, a, a rap duo that they meet. Yeah. Um, in in the past, and uh, it's it's great. So I hope it comes out. So do you I. Know, I've Just, never, I haven't seen it, but yeah, it's cool. Kind of reminded it's me of cool Loki premise. with the little device that you know can take. Oh yeah, yeah. Time. Hey, I want to again thank you for taking your time for for being on the show. Thank you for representing the Filipinos out here, and you know, much props to you, your future, everything else you have involved. And you know, you're definitely welcome on this podcast, on the show, anytime you want to come on. Anytime you want to, I'm trying to do. I, I reached out to Joey just a couple of days ago, and Joey, if, Joey, if you're watching, I said I'd like to get you three, you two on here, so that way, you know, you guys can just have fun talking, and then, yeah. Know, Joey's a blast to have when oh. I had him on. He was one of the, you know, cool guy felt, you know, same thing with you, man. It's like, I feel this connection with you being a Filipino, Filipino uh, actor here. It's like, you know, you know how we say us Filipinos are all connected one way or the other. Um, we have yeah. this connection. And when you said, dude, let's just do it. Let's just shoot. Let's just go. And I was like, all right, you know, all right. Let me yeah. Make sure I ask this. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's nothing. You know, there there doesn't have to be any kind of uh, tiptoeing around anything because it's you know it's all real and it's all part of the experience. So, yeah, yeah. yeah um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Tacoma FD. Um, you can find you on there. Find you on the Loki series. Yeah. Find you on the Loki, and then um, also that short Aswang next door. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Me and Bernard uh, Batian did that, and it was awesome to do. And it, you know, that was just kind of to give some props, you know, do some sketch short film style. Um, that kind of gives us a little bit of props towards our upbringing. And I mean, the premise wise of it, I still love, and I yeah. think that it could be something that we can do, but I like, you know, we'll see if there's more for that. But, um, other than that, you know, um, Star Trek lower decks comes out yes. in mid August season two, Paramount plus. Yes. Um, Tacoma FD starts, in about a month in September season three on true TV and uh, H it, the first two seasons are on HBO max. If you have that, so you can check that out. And, uh, yeah. And then hopefully uh, Easter Sunday comes out next spring and we'll talk again before that. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, definitely love uh, to have you back on before that. And uh, talk about that. And, you know, maybe even while Tacoma is running, we can, we can get back on and, and chat. So nice. yeah, I'm, I'm down for whatever, man. Like I'm here to support you. I love the fact that you're doing this. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and, uh, and, and love that, you know, you set up shop to, you know, to, to do it. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that. And I want to give you uh, whatever I can to, uh, to help it out. You know, now you being on here right now, um, you know, being on here right now, is a, it's, it's a, it's my honor to have you on the show and to share your story and, you know, the difficulties, the positive this that you know you have moving forward and again we're watching you on tv and and me looking at my computer screen right now i'm still watching you on you know on the screen yeah um you know you're playing a different you know you're playing yourself which is cool and again you guys watch him on disney plus he's he's on the mandalorian he's on loki uh scott kong Sky yeah. island uh, tacoma fd um star trek uh man the, you again your resume man your resume is just like 
You know, if I saw you on the street, mom, you're watching, don't call him because I'm going to walk up to him myself. All right, mom, I'm going to yeah. walk up. Well, you know, if I'm up there by you, I'll reach out and we'll uh, we'll break bread and definitely. Person, you know? that, I mean, yeah, definitely, man. We'll we'll come out here. I'll take you to my favorite Filipino restaurant. I'm trying to think if there is a good Filipino restaurant that I like going to. Yeah, I'll take you to my favorite That's Filipino right. restaurant. Just, we'll get a pot of rice on. Yes, we'll get some fried chicken. We'll just sit and we'll record a part podcast on person. Or something. Oh man, that that would definitely definitely be that. That would be great, man. I to- totally appreciate that, man. Appreciate the support yeah, yeah, and appreciate, appreciate the love. Let's go ahead and give uh, Eugene another round of applause with a sound effect love right it. here. And since Eugene is old school like I am, we can give him a little, you know, little uh, hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Eugene love Cordero, it. thank you for jumping on the daily podcast with me. And, you know, much love to you in the future. Good luck in the future. And we can't wait to see you on the screen again. And, you know, we'll talk. We'll definitely talk soon. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you, buddy. Take care. All right. Eugene Cordero. Man, thank you guys for jumping on. All you guys who who um who jumped on comments, Michael Reyes, I saw your comment. Yes, Filipino Pride. Thank you guys. Definitely catch him on his show, Tacoma FD. Like I said, uh Loki, he's on the first episode of Loki, so you guys don't even have to like, you know, watch you should watch the whole season, but you don't have to watch the whole season. Um but thank you for Michael um for Michael Reyes. Thank you for Eugene Cordero for jumping on the show. Definitely catch him on. Thank you guys for watching the daily podcast with me, Eric B. You can catch this on YouTube. It's going to be replay on my Facebook channel as well. So if you guys want to watch it on the Facebook channel, you can watch it on there. I will update it, upload it on YouTube as well. And if you guys don't like to watch and don't, you know, want to see this mug right here, you guys can listen to it on all podcast platforms. As of tomorrow, it will be available on Apple, Google, Spotify, whatever podcast or wherever you listen to your podcast. If you're sitting in the bathroom, just go, hey, Google, play the daily podcast with Eric B. He'll, they'll, they'll find it for you. But until next time, no, 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 no. that's what happens when you talk a lot. That's what happens. But until next time, thank you guys for watching. And we'll go out as we went in. The podcast has ended. Thanks for watching, guys. Go peace. Also, if you guys know anyone who wants to jump on the daily podcast, with me, share their light, share their story. If they have a food truck, if they have food that they want to, you know, want to plug on my channel, bring them over to me. You know, we go ahead and do what we did here. We'll talk, probably won't talk for an hour like we did with Eugene, but definitely bring them over to me, share their story, share whatever they want to share. And we'll, you know, we'll give them that shameless free plug. But until next time, guys, guys, thanks for watching. See ya. Recording stopped.